when I was talking about target audiences earlier in the context of key messaging, I talked about co-professional, co-professionals. So that's a key audience for CIFA, and that's something that I do quite a lot of work with for, for CIFA on. Um, and there are a whole range of different organizations. Um, a lot of them are co-professional bodies. They're not all co-professional bodies. And by the way, by co-professional body, what I mean is, so an organization like CIFA, but for another profession, so the RIBA for architects, RTPI, Royal Town Planning Institute for planners, and so on, those kinds of organizations, professional bodies and the like. Um, but they're not the only external voices, but they are important. Um, and so rather than trying to get lots of them to come here today, what I asked them to do was just make a little video to, uh, with you guys in mind um, and just to tell them about the work that CIFA is doing with them and they're doing with CIFA and thought it would be quite useful for you guys to understand some of the work that's going on in the background um, with all these other organisations. So, if I... seamlessly move on my name is richard Lyon. i'm head of policy practice and research at the royal town planning institute the royal town planning institute is an international professional body for town planners with over 27,000 members in 88 countries we are responsible for maintaining professional standards and accrediting world-class planning courses both in the uk and internationally we were founded in 1914 and became a Royal Institute in 1970. We are the voice of the planning profession and engage with governments, experts, advocates and international bodies to promote good planning, to lead on planning policy development and research, and to promote planning in the long-term public interest. We support our members to deliver outstanding placemaking that creates inclusive, healthy, prosperous and sustainable communities. We support young people looking for pathways into the profession through apprenticeships and RTPI accredited courses, as well as actively engaging with students and teachers. We fund Planning Aid England, a service that provides planning advice and support to help individuals and communities engage with the planning system. Throughout the year, we offer a comprehensive programme of events and training for our members, as well as an awards programme. We promote an ethos of lifelong learning and continuing professional development. We ensure that the planning profession is exemplary, upholding the highest ethics and professional standards. As an institute, we've been working with other professional bodies to promote learning and development. The RTPI and CIFA have been working together for several years, mainly on joint CPD events. CIFA has been working with our regional coordinators up and down the country to develop content for these events and producing speakers. These events are an important way of ensuring our members, both planning consultants and local authority planners, are up to date with knowledge about how archaeology fits into the planning process. These joint CPD events can also be great ways for CIFA members and RTP members to meet each other in their regions. We look forward to continuing to work together in the future. I'm Jack Snape, and I'm the Specialist Registrar at the Royal Institute of British Architects. The RIBA promotes architecture as a profound expression of cultural heritage. We therefore seek to support the conservation, sensitive, sensitive adaption, repair, restoration and protection of historic buildings. Due to their architectural merit, artistic and or historic interest and significance, these sites form an integral part of heritage of the built environment. The conservation work done is just one part of an entirely multidisciplinary uh, process, one which members of the CIFA are also uh, set within. We therefore see the importance of our engagement with the CIFA and its members. One way that we do this is through our accreditation scheme. Uh, the REVA accreditation scheme uh, is a designed accreditation scheme for architects, um, which is multi-stage. Uh, the lowest stage, we have conservation registrants, 
and in the middle we have conservation architects and at the top we have specialist conservation architects. Uh, of the bottom rung we have 414 members, conservation architects we have 229 and specialist conservation architects we have 147. So we have almost 800 and the, the purpose of having these accredited architects are to ensure that the clients and public are able to understand uh, which of the architects at Reva have a suitable standard of knowledge to work on specific sites, whether that's domestic buildings all the way through to Grade 1 listed buildings. Another part of the reason we have this scheme is to ensure that architects uh, at various levels are fully engaged with other organisations who are within the heritage sector, including the archaeologists. Uh, one way we do this is through CPD. Uh, and one document we have that we use is the CPD pathway. Um, one way that we want to use the CPD pathway, uh, particularly with the CIFA, is to ensure that we can use this document to bring together uh, CPD from across the whole sector into one location. Uh, and this will allow not only our own architects, but other accredited professionals uh, to be fully aware of the wide variety of CPD opportunities across the many facets of the heritage world. We also feel um, that we can use other platforms such as our CPD forum or our newsletter to uh, publish or advertise and signpost other events that archaeologists may well be up to, um, as we feel that it's extremely important for our accredited archae um, architects to be fully aware of what's going on across all the many sectors. Um, so we look forward to working on, on these projects with you, and uh, thank you very much for listening. Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're having a great conference this week. My name is Lizzie Glitherow West and I'm the Chief Executive of the Heritage Alliance, which is the umbrella body for independent heritage interests and CIFRA is one of our valued members. I've been asked today to think about why and what I value about the relationship with CIFA. And I think it's fair to say that they are one of the most active of our members in the advocacy space and work with us almost on a daily basis to advocate for the needs of both their members, but the wider archaeological sector and help us to think about where those issues interplay with other parts of the heritage sector. We are emerging from a really strange period, uh, I think it's been described as a permacrisis from Brexit and look at the impacts of that on our wider sector through to COVID and coming out of that into a cost of living crisis. But not only are we pondering those areas, but we're looking ahead to some of the things that are going to be emerging and in discussion over the next year from government and from other sectors. And that ranges from the future of rural heritage and farming and its role in the preservation and protection of monuments and heritage within those, those spaces through to changes to the planning um, environment and the levelling up and regeneration work that's underway and other areas uh, such as climate change adaptation and some of the bigger debates that are going on that are looking ahead into the future. There's a lot emerging, it's going to be a really interesting time, but there's no way that I could be advocating in the way that I do or to do it as effectively without parts of the sector coming together to be really thinking about what are the issues that they have and that they're facing and then how does that link up with the commonality across the heritage sector and CIFA is really integral in communicating what archaeology is facing, the issues and the opportunities and the things that are coming down the line that we may not have picked up on that have an impact on archaeology. CIFA sits on our rural and spatial planning groups, uh, sits on our skills and education groups and, and also some of our more informal forums is helping to feed through impacts to our data desk on cost of living, helping to think about case studies and uh, one of the big consultations coming up shortly is going to be on shortage occupation in the context of the Migration Advisory Committee.
So all of these things, uh, we rely on CIFA to be giving us the expert view and to be helping us understand where archaeology has similar issues or different issues to the other parts of the sector that we're also communicating with. We really value uh, the work that they do. Um, they work really hard on your behalf, often sometimes unseen, I think, in, in relationship with us. And we're really grateful. Long may this partnership continue. Hi everyone, I am Dirk Venix, Chief Executive of Syria. We are a not-for-profit member-based organization. Our aim is to be working in collaboration with yourselves to improve performance in the construction and built environment sectors. We've been doing it for 60 years and our major outputs have been guidance, training and events. One of the guides that we published some time ago was Archaeology and Development. It was published in 2008. And a few years ago, our members approached me suggesting this might need an update. I brought together 13 funders, including major clients, design consultancies, tier one contractors, archaeology consultancies, and the UK's trade bodies in archaeology, with our partners, CIFA leading the pack. Syria formed a project steering group with 20 funders and stakeholders chaired by the regulator, the Environment Agency. Together with subcontracted authors led by Tara Nixon and Christina Holloway, they wrote a compelling guide with 28 case studies of good practice. This culminated in the publication of Archaeology and Construction Good Practice Guidance in July 2021. I can really highly recommend reading this guide as it is sector leading and underpins the CIFA accreditation to achieving good practice in our sector. The guidance reiterates that archaeology is a necessity in any construction project. It's a necessary component and a positive part of any construction project. It offers practical advice at all stages of the construction and development life cycle. And I think you'll find when you're reading the guide that the case studies demonstrate that engineers and archaeologists can work together in an integrated multidisciplinary project team, whether it's driving effective management of the planning and design processes, or whether it's monitoring and mitigating against potential risks. We have common goals and outcomes in seeking significant societal sustainability and business value from these projects. I'm therefore delighted that we've partnered up with CIFA in offering conference delegates a discount for, to the guide for the next few weeks. Don't miss this opportunity to get your must-have guide for archaeology <laughs> in construction. And enjoy your conference. Our St. James exhibition is just one of the ways we've engaged with people and communities throughout our archaeological programme. The Historic Environment Team at HS2 works to support our overarching commitment of respecting people and respecting places. I think everybody is interested in their past, particularly in the ebb and flow of a city like London, where people come from all over the world. It's really important that we understand the people who helped us create this fabulous city and all ranges of skills that were drawn upon to do that, whether they were dressmakers or the forerunners of Fortnum and Masons. And in the Legally Binding Heritage Memorandum, we have specific commitments to maximise the opportunities for dissemination and outreach that results from the historic environment investigations that we undertake. The mechanism we've developed to ensure that community engagement is embedded in our work is via the Historic Environment Research and Delivery Strategy. And we've developed a series of specific research objectives to focus attention and resources that very much includes community engagement. 
or specialist supply chain has to respond to these specific objectives in their project plans, which sets out how they're going to deliver their work. Our supply chain has very much embraced the opportunities offered by HS2 Works to showcase the very best of community engagement. We have held over 220 historic environment engagement activities. In addition to the TV programmes and what's on the HS2 website, examples of the great work undertaken by the HS2 team and our supply chain include the work undertaken during COVID, which enabled site engagement to make use of technology, bringing a site visit directly into people's homes. We spoke at a number of conferences, local ones such as the annual Buckinghamshire Archaeological Society, or CIFA, and the EAO. We've loaned Roman statues to the Discover Bucks Museum. We supported the development of a new CBA Young Archaeological Club in Solihull and our years of participation in the Festival of Archaeology has produced site visits, webinars and lectures. And of course, there was the pop-up museum in St Mary's Stoke Mandeville, where this field museum enabled the team to host open days, allowing locals and people from further afield to see the site from a viewing platform, an exhibition of some of the artefacts, along with models and information boards. And there was also a series of specialist training classes. I want to end with a message that arrived into HS2 earlier this month. I would like to thank you again for your wonderful presentation to the Wendover Society on Friday night. You truly did inform and entertain the 100 attendees who were united in their appreciation for your contribution. I hope this will not be the last time we see you. As you said, the hard work is still to be done in analysing all the material. So perhaps you could let us know when we should get together again to witness your progress. Hello. My name is Marie Claude Hemming, and I'm Director of Operations at the Civil Engineering Contractors Association, also known as SECA. SECA is the representative body for those companies who build and maintain the UK's public infrastructure. This means that we tend to build anything that doesn't have a door on it. Roads, <laughs> railways, and utility networks are all examples of our work. My role is a communications role. In essence, representing the views of our members to government, civil service and the wider policy making community. I also provide the Secretariat to a number of member led special interest groups, namely focusing in the areas of roads, highways maintenance and procurement. So looking at the exam question, why is it important for civil engineering contractors to understand about archaeology and archaeologists? Well, what a question. And maybe I'm a little bit biased here, as some of my earliest childhood memories are digging up old bits of pottery and ironwork from my parents' garden. I grew up on what was previously farmland and took these excavations to the local museum, thinking I had found something of significance. I was eight. And while the findings had little material or historical value, it did unlock further understanding of the social history of the time. And I think as an industry, we have a particular role to play in furthering our understanding of the past, generating ongoing interest in how we used to live and preserving these time warps for our future generations. Also, it's important to challenge the beliefs we once held, thanks to the introduction of new technologies and methods. Our industry has learned that having archaeologists on site is not only of educational value in itself, but can also provide useful links to the local population and provide interaction with local authorities and institutions. And we see real life evidence of this with the redevelopment of London Bridge Station and also along the HS2 route. Fascinating unearthings, really, really bringing history to life. So in today's society, no longer is archaeology a nuisance to be got out of the way as soon as possible, nor is it merely a necessary add on. 
archaeology is now fully embedded within our procurements. And just think what we would have found had these values been in place before the car park entombing Richard III had been built. Thank you very much and enjoy your conference. Hello everyone and welcome to this important conference. I'm delighted to be be part of the external voices session of the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists. My name is Ros Thorpe. I'm Director of Education and Standards at the Chartered Institute of Building. The Chartered Institute of Building was founded in 1834, the same year as the RIBA, and is a charity for public benefit. Our Royal Charter is to advance the science and practice of construction for public benefit, and thus fits very well with CIFA's public benefit remit and their values of reliability, integrity, resourcefulness, teamwork and trust. Our vision is to improve the quality of life for those using and creating the built environment, and these align very closely with your own values. At the CIOB, we are proud to be a professional body and collaborative partner of the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists. Professional body accreditation has many important benefits for the individual, some personal or professional, but none more so than knowledge sharing across the sector for the benefit of communities and societies and which can advance our understanding of our shared history and culture. Our community of over 48,000 members can benefit from your expertise and learning. Only by working together can we promote this important work that informs our shared understanding of the world. I was particularly imp impressed by many archaeological finds in 2022, which include an underground city, Midyat, in Turkey, a Buddhist temple that dates back to the mid-2nd century BC in Pakistan, a 9,000-year-old shrine discovered in Jordan's eastern desert. In Syria, archaeologists uncovered a massive colourful mosaic dating back some 1,600 years. These could be the future wonders of our world. Many archaeological finds are associated with construction works and are only discovered if they are recognised and treated as such by constructors. For example, there are over a thousand archaeologists working on the HS2 project alone. This is why the CIOB are committed to working with CIFA to share knowledge and understanding and to preserve our amazing history and our world. Thank you for listening to me and please do reach out to us if you, uh, to help us with your important work. I wish you a great and productive conference. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jonathan Payne, the Vice Chair of the Chartered Institute of Building for Northern Ireland. The CUB are continually striving to forge strong links with all of the construction industry stakeholders. So we were delighted to recently collaborate with CIFA when we held a joint webinar entitled Telling Stories and Sharing Myths, which featured a highly prestigious panel, including Peter Hinton, the CEO of CIFA, John O'Keefe, CEO of the Discovery Programme, Lena Hoist, renowned conservation architect, and Andrew Galt from the Historic Environment Division for the Department of Communities. This seminar focused on where archaeology fits into the construction process, considering the perspective from both viewpoints of the archaeologist and the construction professional. This was a fantastic way to demonstrate the importance of archaeology and how it connects across all the disciplines, interacting with the overall construction process, with real-life case studies detailing the interpersonal development that supports all the parties involved. The seminar also gave a great insight as to when to talk to an archaeologist and highlighting the importance and benefits of early engagement. The event then concluded with a question and answer session that opened up a very engaging and healthy debate that was very much enjoyed by everyone. We had very positive member feedback in the seminar afterwards and on the back of the success of this event we're definitely planning further collaboration with CIFA in the very near future. It's been a pleasure to work with CIFA 
And on behalf of the CUB, I wish you all a very successful and enjoyable annual conference. Thank you.